Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at a new Sencut fixed blade that I'm very excited about. Uh, a new exciting thing in the state of the collection took me long enough. And then 10 of the coolest large folders. And I'll give you a little hint. Uh, the state of the collection contains one of those 10 coolest large folders. Uh, let me tell you right up front, and then I'll tell you when we get there. Uh, this does not include anything XL from Cold Steel. <clears throat> No repeats, so only uh, one knife representing uh, one brand at a time, and then we're going to go from there. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Four inches plus, ladies and gentlemen, four inches plus. All right, but first up, a pocket check. Now, today I was carrying something I haven't carried in a long time, and sort of like having a fine, high-performance car, you got to take it out. You got to you gotta make it do what it was born to do, and so... Today, I was carrying my Greg Lightfoot Element, and unfortunately, I was not wearing suspenders today. This thing is a beast. It is so big and so heavy. It's about, it's, a, it's shy of a half inch. Let's see. What are we dealing with? It's just, it's about three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, beautiful micarta, canvas micarta here, and uh, very, very thick titanium liners on bearings, smooth as silk. And a big, just a big recurve Tonto here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just a big recurve Tonto here. Uh, now, I have learned from good friend of the show, uh, Dave, that it is Tonto. So from now on, I am changing how I pronounce it. I've pronounced it Tanto for over 20 years. From now on, I'm calling it Tonto because that's how the Japanese pronounce it. And I got, I got a sort of uh, a, a real uh, definitive answer on that. So I'm going to go with that. So this recurved Tonto here is quite sharp, hollow ground, and has that really cool swedge on the one side. On this side, it, it does not have the swedge. Uh, very, very sharp, very impractical. A beautiful clip here. Um, not much clearance under the pocket, but that's, uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy who makes the Damascus? It's his. It'll come to me in a minute. All right, next up is the Jack Wolf Knives um, Sharpshooter. Now, this is the knife I used today. I used this to cut an apple at work, and uh, that is it, but it was a pleasure to cut with this. It's so thin and hollow ground, high, 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 all the way up to the uh, spine hollow grind. That's M390 blade steel on a uh, integral titanium frame. And by that, when we're talking slip joints, we're not saying it's not the same thing as an integral with a modern uh, locking folder. This just means that the bolsters and the liners are one solid piece of titanium out of which a pocket was milled that the covers rest in. Uh, as opposed to the bolsters being soldered onto the liners, which is kind of the more traditional way of manufacturing a slip joint. Uh, Jack Wolf Knives, uh, Ben Belkin is uh on the has been on the show just recently and uh he is the man here episode 308 we've kind of been with him this whole journey and uh, you know i don't use that word lightly as a matter of fact i pretty much hate the the modern use of journey but his has actually been a journey uh both in time space and energy so this thing is the result of that and it has amazing walk and talk an amazing blade four different handle covers. I have the fat carbon. All right. And last up, I had this in my pocket rattling around very light, kind of forgot about it. Uh, this is the station nine, number four, based on the SOE lapel dagger from uh, World War II, uh, or a resistance weapon to, to be uh, clandestine, you know, uh, hidden, sewn to the clothing, sewn under the lapel of the jacket or to the inside of a pocket. Uh, it's so thin and light, it won't print. Double-edged, very, very sharp, uh, both as a, as a cutter and as a piercer. 
And then it has this incredibly aggressive jimping, these long rows, uh, like a like a field of jimping there. And it's it stays in your in your hand very, very well. And then with the addition of a fob here, you can do a lot of different uh, hand holds with this for using it as a punch dagger, using it as a slicer. Uh, it's a it's a really cool little implement. Now, Station 9 is a is a company I discovered on Instagram uh, through a French knife maker that I follow, Tony Lopez, who does some really cool tactical stuff and then some stuff based on some more uh, historic designs. And that's what this company is based on, Station 9. Uh, historic knives from the resistance, knives and weapons like knuckle dusters and other kind of menacing things uh, from the World War II occupied uh, Europe resistance. So very cool stuff. And uh, I'm excited to get more of their their stuff but this uh this little number four is a very very handy little thing to have in your pocket you could use this to open boxes and such and it's so light no one will know you have it in your pocket and uh well it might not be 100 percent legal everywhere because it's a double edge but <laughs> it's still a great knife all right well what were you carrying let me know leave it in the comment below as usual or you can call the listener line 724-466-4487 and let us know uh, those little messages give me inspiration, uh, remind me about knives that I want to get or open my eyes to knives that I didn't know about. So uh, please do that. It's, it's not only selfish, but uh, we can let everyone else know about these great knives that we're all carrying. Okay, uh, coming up is uh, tomorrow night is the Gentleman Junkie giveaway on the Knife Junkie. Uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday Night Knives. Very excited for this one. Uh, I'm excited for each one. I love these giveaways because we always end up getting really cool knives in to give away. This one uh, came in from Dave, this old sword blade reviews. It is the Harns Falcon. This thing is a beautiful knife. Harns makes an incredible knife. Very, very high value. Uh, meaning you're not paying much money and you're getting an incredibly manufactured knife. And uh, not for nothing, the design... Uh, which is always a matter of taste, but the design is really awesome, especially on this one. Look at that blade. That's a uh, three and almost three quarters inch blade. I don't know what you want to call this. What is that? A modified Warncliffe, a bellied Warncliffe, perhaps, uh, or mm, I'm not sure. It's it's almost like a spear point with a swale and a single bevel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it, but I call it beautiful. It's also extremely sharp and it's extremely pointy. And this handle is really nicely contoured. This is a Thunderhead Blue, and it is contoured in the cross section. You can see it's rounded, very comfortable in the hand, like really comfortable in the hand. And you've got this nice jimping down there on the swale, deep carry pocket clip. You have a G10 gear style backspacer there. And um, uh, for you lanyard and fob people, it's got a nice little groove here to accommodate the um, the width, some of the width of the 550 cord, so it's not popping out too far, uh, you know, to make that that 90 degree turn. So a lot of uh, design considerations in this. One one interesting thing is that eye. Of course, this looks like a raptor. It's called a falcon. It looks like a bird of prey. Uh, the the eye part right here is not an opener, or I have not been able to. I guess you can you can slow roll it out if you pinch grip it, um, but I cannot spidey flick it to save my life. So uh, it is not a spidey flicker, but, you know, does everything have to be a spider flicker, spidey flicker? Uh, so I'm going to that's going out on the Wheel of Destiny and then also uh, a dice pick, a DeMarco knives, knife and tool dice pick. We'll just call it the DeMarco dice pick. Pretty cool little uh, handy implement you can keep in your pocket for various tasks of course it comes with a little kydex sheath i don't expect you to drop that in your pocket and just kind of walk around casually um but so how do you get these things you get them from being a gentleman junkie and uh what is gentleman junkie it, it is our high tier of support on patreon so uh if you're interested if you think what we do here is valuable go over to uh, the knife junkie.com slash patreon and sign up, see what you get. You get a lot of uh, things, actually. Interview extras are my favorite. So each time we record an interview with one of these great people, uh, they agree to come back on for another uh, 15 minutes or so, and we talk about things that I don't, we don't bring up on the podcast. And it's always a, 
uh, revealing and fun. So check it out. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spiderco, Wee, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So you don't have to be paying too close attention uh, to know that I've been sort of obsessing about this knife for the past few weeks. This is the Sencut Bronte, uh, just a really nicely done and uh, beautifully designed Warncliffe uh, with a belly uh, and a nice fuller, in, in my case, the um, micarta handles. Excellent, excellent micarta. Now, Sencut is the budget line under Civivi. So it goes, we, Civivi, they've moved up to the mid-tier. And now Sencut is their budget line. And they're all excellent. They're all, all excellent. Of course, we gives you the most premium uh, designs and uh, executions and materials. To me, Civivi is my favorite of the group. And now Sencut is bringing up the rear. I'm really excited about it. Um because this knife has been just a hit for me. Super Slicer, 9CR is pretty damn darn good steel here. Uh, they have something new coming out, and it's uh, a fixed blade. And it has me really excited because it looks, it's got sort of the blade shape of the um, uh, the new button lock from Civivi, uh, the Cogent. It's not the new button lock. It's the old button lock from Civivi, the Cogent. It's got that blade, and I love that blade. It's a clip point with a center line point. And uh, this one is a 3.75 inch fixed blade and you can get it in my card in G10, but just a perfect little size for uh, if you're a fixed blade lover and you like to carry knives, fixed blade knives every day. This is a great little option. Also, uh, like it's Civivi brother, the Terzawola knife, it's got a real uh, elaborate and probably expensive-ish fob on it. Uh, which aids in draw and drawing the knife and looking cool. Uh, I, of course, would take that off immediately. I'd probably put it on something else, probably a little folder. Uh, but uh, this is the version of it I want, that black blade with the green micarta. I think this thing is awesome. It is uh, 9CR uh, steel, which has been proven to be pretty good and, and much better than 8CR. Uh, it's little brother, I guess redheaded stepchild sorry all you redheads um so yeah excited you know it'll have very thin cutting geometry it comes in a kydex sheath which kind of like the spider co fix blades has sort of a wide um sort of a broad footprint maybe broader than i would prefer uh but it also comes with a tech lock style uh, t-clip they call it it looks just like a tech lock so you're getting a lot for your under a hundred dollars here i think it's about 80 bucks and I just saw that you can now get them on Amazon. I looked elsewhere. I didn't see it elsewhere. So check that out. That's the Send Cut, the new Send Cut fixed blade. And uh, wait, I'm not telling you what it's called because I don't know what it's called. Um, what is this thing? Oh, yeah, the Waxahachi. Interesting name, Waxahachi. I don't know if it is, but it evokes uh, Native American something. So Waxahachi, check it out. Uh, from Sencut. Also from the Wii Umbrella Knife Companies, uh, we have from Civivi 2, really cool. <clears throat> my voice just cracked there. Something's going on with my voice today. Might be coming down with something. Uh, but uh, two really cool blades coming from Civivi, uh, both folders. One is an Eric Oaks, and it's a very different blade shape from what I know of Eric Oaks, um, who's a custom knife maker who's been doing a number of uh, collaborations with production companies. Uh, actually, he has over the past, I don't know, five years or so, I've noticed it. Uh, noticed his uh, his stuff in the production world. But his knives tend to be 
from my recollection, more leaf shaped and more drop pointy. Well, this one, the, the mini sandbar, uh, just announced by Civivi, is a recurve tanto, tanto. It's a recurve tanto in a very sort of neutral handle, uh, but a really exquisite blade and very different from what I know of Eric Oaks's design work. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, I love the look of it. This, this is one I'll probably have to get, even though it's 2.95 inches. I'd love that to be 3.95 inches, but hey, we can't always get what we want. And it's got Nitro V steel, which I know to be a very good uh, budget steel and G10 and micarta. So the usual, um, the usual recipe. And I like that usual recipe, you know, it's like, uh, give me the same, but different. And then that's what we want. Uh, and the next one from them is a nice sheep's foot blade using the button lock. This being the year of the button lock for the Wii companies. Uh, this one is called the Chevalier. I like the name Chevalier. And when you look at it, it looks sort of Santoku-esque. Uh, so it looks sort of like a kitchen knife. And then I think Chevalier, that sounds like a French kitchen. I don't know. So I like what it evokes. I don't know what it means. 14C 28N steel. We all love that. Uh, instead of the Nitro V. And that's a 3.46 inch blade. I'd love to see. I can't wait to see what the sandbar looks like. If the mini sandbar, this, this Eric Oaks is at 2.95. Maybe the sandbar will be, you know, bigger. Like this Chevalier at uh, just shy of three and a half inches. Uh, this picture here from Knife News with that beautiful wood handle. Uh, loving that. I think I need to get a Civivi with a wood handle. However, I think I will also be selling off some Civivis because I went a little Civivi happy uh, not too long ago. So great stuff coming from the Wii companies. That's what I'm going to call them. And uh, I'm looking forward to especially that Sen Cut fixed blade, the Waxa, Waxahachi. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at a, at a knife that, man, it was like a tribulation to get. I finally got it. I'm very excited. And then that rolls over into the 10 coolest large folders right here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. My uh, road trip knife. This is the Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is a 2012 version with that perfect Tonto. Tonto. Gosh, I'm sorry. I'll get this. With that perfect Tonto shape. I love it. So I was extremely excited to find out, uh, unlike many, that Microtech was going to be making an affordable version of the Bravo. And the SOCOM Bravo is the one that they uh, put their English on and customize. And, um, you know, that's a Marfione custom knife. So uh, I always wanted one of those. Those, of course, are very expensive. So I was thrilled to find out that they were doing that production model with Reich Knife, another company that I have a little bit of experience with and know them to be uh, really excellent, excellently built and designed knives. So the story is Microtech uh, takes the SOCOM Bravo uh, into production with a Chinese company. A lot of people don't like that, but I think most people were won over uh, because this is the knife. And I finally got it. Thank you to my patrons. This was made possible by them. And uh, this is the SOCOM Bravo. It is a bolster lock with titanium and carbon fiber, a really nice carbon fiber, sort of regular weave. Uh, but but with the way it's milled, it gives it a, a an appearance that's very pleasing to me. This back strap is incredible with jimping in all directions, basically. Um, I love Microtech jimping. I love what they do with aluminum in their, in the handles of their knives. This is my first non-aluminum Microtech knife. And the way they've milled the jimping in the back of the thumb ramp on this, uh, on this titanium just is incredible. It's milled in lines going horizontally and then also in two lines going vertically. So you're getting little plateaus. You're getting little buttes for your, <laughs> for your thumb to nestle into. You get an amazingly sure grip on the back of this knife without being obnoxious. And then up front, you have some jimping right here in the usual spot um, where you see it on other SOCOMs. And then up here, uh, this, might, this might be a little sharp right here. I don't know. If you're thrusting really hard and your finger came up onto this, this might be a little 
thin and sharp. Haven't haven't felt that yet, uh, but I could see with real hard use that might be something. Uh, but I'm not trying to pick nits because there's not much to pick here. Uh, this jimping on the back of the molded tight, not molded, uh, sculpted titanium pocket clip here really helps in drawing the knife. And then here we go. Look at this. Uh, the SOCOM Elite up top was the one of two knives that I always excused for being tip down only, even though this knife could easily be tip up or tip down. It always made me bristle, but I was like, but it's the SOCOM Elite and it's so amazing that it's fine. Um, so on this one, they opted to do it tip down and it makes a huge difference. I really, really prefer tip down as do most. And uh, on this knife, it it just works great. I, I don't mind it. I don't mind the tip down on this or the, yeah, the tip down on this. But on this one, I'm just so thrilled to have it. You've got a nice, uh, this in this case, clip point M390 blade. Really nicely shaped blade there. That The profile is the classic Microtech SOCOM clip point. But the the face of the blade there has that fuller and uh by the way you cannot uh, spidey flick it with that fuller um, unless you have elfin fingers uh very sharp very thin behind the edge but also very steep grind i don't know how they do that but that's kind of what they do uh, at least on the knives that i have and then you have a very reinforced tip look at the that triangle uh if you can't uh, if you're not looking here when you when you look at the tip of this knife, it really comes at quite a uh, a triangular tip, and then it tapers off pretty quickly uh, to go into that fuller. Just a beautiful, beautiful blade. The big giant thumb studs act as the blade stops, and you have this jimping just above the ricasso, just above the um, thumb studs that I love. I love it on the other knife, and I love it on this. It's a great place for your thumb to be. Gives you great control because you can pull back on the blade and push forward uh, with your forefingers. It, you know, in a in a in a cut, it's just very secure. You can hold it in with that sort of grip. Uh, the action is exquisite uh, on bearings and just falls shut. Uh, a pretty light detent. You can shake this open easily. I'm going to do this here on the wide shot. Uh, you can just whip it and it opens up. Um, for me, I don't mind that on a tactical knife. That's, uh, that's, all, that's a feature, not a bug for me. Um, you just never know if it's, if you're using it as a tactical knife. Now I'm not doing it because I'm pressing down on the lock bar, uh, but it is a nice light detent. You can roll it out and you can flick it out easily. Um, but you can also, you know, shake it out. And if that bothers you, you might not like that, uh, that aspect of it. But when it's secured in your pocket, it's not an issue. And secure it is. The clip is, that's my one ding. It's too tight. It's too tight. And I'm way too nervous right now in this honeymoon phase to, to mess with it. So I'm going to leave it as is. But um, very, very excited about this knife. This is a knife that makes me, <laughs> excuse me. This is a knife that makes me want to sell other knives. Do you ever do you ever feel that way? It's just like it's it's almost like, baby, you're the one, you know, uh, and I'm going to get rid of everybody else to, and just focus on you, baby. Uh, but, you know, of course, I'm not going to do that with my knife collection, but it does make me want to lighten the load. It's like, well, if I if this is here, shouldn't I don't know, shouldn't I not be so greedy? I don't know. Maybe I should. All right. Next up is from Vosteed. And Vosteed has been, uh, they've been hitting it hard, sending a lot of knife channels, uh, some of their folding knives. They have really cool looking folding locking knives. Uh, I requested a kitchen knife because I have, uh, I know someone who has one of these and I thought it was pretty cool. Now, a different line, but from the same company. Uh, this is the Morgan Chef's Knife from Vosteed. Uh, it is, uh, it's got a three layer high carbon steel. Um, now I think, what was it? What was it? We had a big, long conversation about this on Thursday night knives. I have yet to do my video or my research on this. The only research I've done on this knife so far has been practical in the kitchen and man alive. Is it a cutter? It is a very, very sharp knife. And so far it has maintained its edge pretty well. Uh, that was, that has been my main concern. 
it's kind of like you can you can put a really sharp edge on any thin piece of metal but how long is it going to keep up and uh so far this has kept up very well and i just use a, a booze board a, a a wooden cutting board and um never glass i never quite understood the glass thing um but uh this knife is a uh, has a really great tip which i think comes in very handy in the kitchen uh at least for opening packages and uh and, and i'm sure it has other uh kitchen applications like hollowing out a, a red pepper or a bell pepper or something like that. That's why I like that this is, you know, it's got that classic sort of Santoku shape, except it's got a, a more of a clipped point. But that point allows you, you know, to do a little bit more than the more sheep's foot Santoku. So I'm not sure uh, how you would classify this. I think this is sort of a clip point Santoku. You got a nice rocking edge that, and, and by rocking, I'm not saying that it's like really awesome and rocking, which it is, but I mean, it's great for rocking. It's got a, a subtle belly to it, uh, perfect to, to you know, control uh, that, that sort of space when you're, when you got your tip down and your uh, handle going up and down here. And then you've got the angle of the blade off of the handle. So the whole thing works really great. You'll see that here. You can look that when I put the, uh, when I put the spine across a straight edge, you can see this, how the tip is almost at the very top. And then you have all of that rocking edge there. Uh, some things I'm, you know, this, this tail end, I'm not crazy about design wise. I don't need the blade finish. I think, I think the, the way the blade is, uh, the way the blade looks, um, is nice, but I also think it's decorative. I don't necessarily, so I don't know, like I said, I have to do my research on this and, uh, there's someone I'm going to talk with at the company before I release my video on this, because I want to get a couple things straight. The handle seems to be like a G10 type material and it's faceted in such a way that initially I thought might be uncomfortable. And we were discussing the ergonomics of it. And though it's not my favorite knife in terms of comfort, uh, I have an old an old faithful, you know, uh, my Vustoff Trident. I love that. But I'm starting to really uh, uh, like this grip. You know, uh, sometimes you choke up on a on a chef's knife like that, and I like it in this grip because of the tapering at the front of the scales. So uh, Vastid Morgan, doing my research right now. I'm gonna uh, make the video probably, hopefully by the week or during the weekend, and uh, it'll have a little bit of cutting footage in there. And uh, pretty happy with this knife. And uh, thank you, Vastid, for sending it to me. Um, as uh, as Nick Shabazz would say, we have to we have to assume that it's the best quality control Vastid out there. Um, Anyway, all right, next up, 10 coolest large folders. Now, in the open, I told you what I mean, and I'm going to reiterate. This does not include XL cold steel folders because they obviously dominate the field. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about very pocketable, but large modern locking folders. And I have a lot of them actually getting, I, I wanted it to only be 10 because um, I have at least double that. And I wanted it to be, A, the most unique designs or most appealing to me uh, in terms of blade and in terms of handle. And no repeats. I had a number of knives from Boker. I had a number of knives from Cold Steel. And I was like, no, just one. And a number of knives from um, uh, 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 Emerson. I said, no, just one from each. And uh, so that's what I did. And and the whole thing was kicked off with the arrival of the SOCOM Bravo, which I'm just going to bring out and show off again briefly. I told you all about it just a minute ago. Uh, this is a very compelling knife to me, and it is a, a an actual four inches. I took the ruler. You know, I always have trouble with this green pad. So I took the ru this ruler and measured each blade here to make sure. Some knives that I actually thought were four inches, like, for instance, uh, my Riot K2 are just shy of it. So nothing shy of four inches appears in this list. And most or a number of things exceed four inches. This is right at four inches. The Microtech SOCOM Bravo. Um, it is available. That is the other thing. Each and every one of these 10 knives are available uh, currently. 
I'm not saying that they're easily available. This one, you kind of have to wait for drops, or at least that's how I, I did. And, and it's not inexpensive, but uh, it can be gotten. So this is this the Bravo. It also comes in Tonto and in serrated, fully serrated Tonto, which mm, 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 that one's kind of appealing to me too, I got to say. Uh, but full serrated on, a, on an expensive knife, like, I don't know. Okay, next up, uh, micro or uh, Boker Squail. This is the production version of my Grail knife. Uh, Charles Marlowe, the knife maker, he is out of California, and um, we have chit chatted on Instagram. And one day he will be coming on the podcast. And anything he touches, knife wise, to me is stunning. I, I love his knives. And uh, there's no accounting for taste, so I can't explain why, uh, but it has to do with their beauty. Their, the, their lines just resonate with me. This is my favorite of his designs, and I'm uh, very, very lucky that Boker Knives does this production collaboration and puts this design within reach. Because even if I had the dough to buy a Charles Marlowe custom knife, I don't necessarily have the time. This is a, a gentleman who who's a, you know, he's a true craftsman and he he's in demand. And uh, so it, it would be a real, real, real investment in time and money to get a Charles Marlowe. And um, at this stage in my life, it, it's just not tenable. But Boker makes it available. And here's the kicker. It's also available in green micarta. And um, when I, it first came out, it was only tip down in green micarta or black G10. They had both tip up or tip down. And that was a terrible choice because, of course, I want tip up, but I also wanted the green micarta and I just couldn't <laughs> couldn't abide by the tip down. And on this knife, I don't think it would have. I think it would have bothered me on this knife. I think uh, like the SOCOM Elite and the Spyderco Military which have thin uh, butt ends. That's the only way I, I like it tipped down. So there you go. Next up is the Zero Tolerance 0452CF. I was surprised to see that this knife is still available. For some reason, I thought it was discontinued. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's a 4.125 inch blade. This is S35VN. Um, this knife was my first... I feel like it was one of my first real fancy, like when I got this, this was, uh, you know, held up as my best folder, as my finest folder. And it, it still could easily be in, in anyone's collection. Right now, it just so happens I have things that I prize more than this. But uh, what do I love about this? Everything. Sinkovich designs to me are just exquisite, especially the long and more sinuous ones. Sometimes he gets bulbous. Sometimes he gets stretched out. I like his stretched out and uh, more sinuous designs. Maybe sinuous doesn't describe this one very well because it's pretty linear, but uh, that 460 had a nice S curve to it uh, overall, its profile. Uh, this is uh, ZT starting to go light, you know, ZT light, but the, this thing is built like a tank. It's just not uh, the tank profile of some of the other ZT. So I think this hits just all the right, all the right notes for me. The only thing that did not have, uh, which left a sour taste in my mouth, was the clip that it shipped with. It was a very sort of uh, off-the-shelf Kershaw clip on this expensive and really nice production knife. So I I bought an aftermarket clip. I don't remember who made it or where I got it, but you know. It's it's easily gotten. So the zero tolerance zero four five two CF. This is the kind of carbon fiber I don't really like. Just a regular weave. And now who knows with this uh, SoCom Bravo, I think that is a nicer carbon fiber. But I think it's a somewhat regular weave. It's just the milling and the different uh, different angles and chamfers on there reveal different patterns in the carbon fiber that make it more appealing to me visually and we know how much uh, visual appeal means to me also speaking of visual i love that uh, pivot always have that five spoke pivot reminds me of like a ferrari wheel or something all right uh, next up 
is a very unique one. This is this is my um, Cold Steel entry. Now, as you know, I have plenty of Cold Steels that fit this uh, between four inch and five inch um, uh, category, but this one takes the cake in terms of originality and just purpose driven design. This is the Black Talon Two. Uh, the Black Talon 1 was a premium edition earlier on. Uh, they did some premium knives with aluminum bolsters and polished G10 and charged a lot of money for them. Uh, years later, they refined the design into this. And I say refined because it's nice and thin, pocketable, four and a quarter inches long. And that, uh, and, and uh, yeah, light, easy to carry, but a big knife. Um, and just nasty, gnarly horrifying frankly especially with the uh with the serrations it's an s curve knife uh with a big belly and a really deep recurve that terminates at that at the downward pointing extreme downward pointing hawkbill tip this thing uh takes the civilian from spiderco and beefs it up puts it on steroids puts a lot more meat behind that uh final curve here right at the tip Take a look at the civilian and you'll see that that this S curve blade was adopted from that design. But you will also see that this is a knife you would feel very comfortable using for EDC. If you were comfortable pulling it out in your warehouse job, opening up boxes or whatever, uh, or or getting under zip ties. And I mean, this thing would be awesome in a I used to work in a um, paint warehouse. This would have been awesome there. Uh, for opening zip ties uh, or those big giant straps around around giant boxes and pallets and um yeah this thing would be awesome but people look at you sideways the thing about the civilian is that it doesn't it's got a very very thin tip here uh behind this and you could easily break it you could see someone easily breaking it off by dropping it on a concrete floor like i'm uh one to do or, or or just in in rigorous activity through thick cardboard but this no sir this will be an edc but this will also be an incredible self-defense weapon you have the um the plate the thumb plate here that allows you to open you know slow roll it open but it also will open up on the seam of your pocket as you remove it and uh auto deploy so when you pull it out of your pocket boom you have it like this just like an emerson wave and that is an, probably the most useful quality in a tactical knife, if you ask me, besides a sharp blade, of course. And a, um, it's the ability to have it open without having to fidget with anything small, because if you need to open that up for self-defense, you, you might not be so smooth at spidey flicking, or you might not uh, find that button on the automatic as quickly as you want. But if you can just tug on the knife and have it open in your hand, that's pretty valuable in that situation. Um, this is uh, XHP steel, CTS XHP, which was their first uh, upgrade steel when they went, when they uh, turned their back so so uh, aptly on OS 8A. Thank God they did that, or thank Lynn they did that. And they went to XHP. And then after that, after supply issues, they went to S35VN. Um, just a great knife. Love this thing. This used to be my winter coat knife. Um, it no longer is, or it wasn't this past season. <clears throat> okay, next up. This is also available just in the past few weeks made available. The Bastinelli Knives Big Drago Tax. This is a much older production. This is not uh, uh, what is out now, but uh, what is out now is even more premium. This is made by Lion Steel of Italy. You can see down there. Titanium frame lock with the roto block lock thing that I'm not crazy about. Deep carry pocket clip. Other side is flat G10 without, without liners. Now the G10 is, is nicely contoured and domed over uh, with a really nicely semi-frag pattern milled into it. Very, very nice looking. And M390 blade on the new one. This one, I believe, is D2. Yeah, I think this is D2. Um, if it's not, it's N690CO, no doubt. One of those two. Uh, 
but the new one is M390, so you'll be able to cut all year long and never have to resharpen. An exquisite knife in hand. It just melts into the hand. Recently, I've been into more neutral handles, more straight handles, but something about this big arcing pistol grip just puts the edge and the point right where you want it. You can choke all the way back here, like on an XL cold steel. This is at one, two, three, four, and it's about five inches in blade length, um, or four, four and three quarters, something like that. But when you're back here, uh, you have a lot more reach with it. And then you can come up here, and then you come come up here. Uh, multiple, row, two rolls of jimping, rows of jimping, and a big thumb plate. You can use that thumb plate to sort of cam the blade open like a wave. Uh, I've, I can only really do it if I'm carrying this in my back pocket, which I never do. It's, it's way too big for my back pocket, but I can sort of get it to wave open. Uh, it's nice to have a really big titanium frame lock. Something about it is very gratifying. Uh, and this thing is extremely capable. They have a four, oh, no, I'm sorry, a 3.5 inch version of this knife that is an excellent edc knife i mean really that blade shape yes it's a good fighting we know that uh, bastinelli knives are tactical uh first but this makes an excellent utility knife as well uh, the smaller version and then they also have a um a friction folder version of this that is the drago tack okay next up i'm gonna get fancy for a second is the lucha that that's as fancy as i get with the with the butterfly knives oh, i'm sorry the bally songs um this is the lucha just a great looking knife and i'm so happy kershaw did this because i've always wanted a, a higher end of like a, a nice bally song but never could justify paying nice bally song money this came out at 115 bucks with with really nicely milled handles and an excellent 14C 28N, very usable utilitarian clip point blade uh, that's four and a quarter inches long, like a traditional Bally song is. And just knock my socks off because it's got bearings in the, in the, <laughs> sorry, 1950s just called and they want their expression back. Uh, it's got the old um, bearings in the pivot and it makes the flipping really fun. Now, I'm not much of a flipper. I have a couple things I've known since I was in eighth grade. But you, you watch these guys outside of Blade Show doing their, their ballet song stuff. It's a whole <laughs> couple levels different. Uh, but this one is very usable. You could use this uh, as a EDC pocket knife if you like carrying around big knives. But also, in terms of a self-defense weapon, this... Uh, you know, like the original Bally song, this would make an excellent uh, implement for that. You've got a really nice thumb ramp there, nice big handle to hold on to, a lot of reach, very sharp blade, good point, reinforced. So if you can bring it to bear without without dropping it, uh, who knows, maybe you'll scare people away with it because they're like, oh, wow, he must be a knife fighter. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a really good one and it's only about 120 bucks so you don't have to pay 400 bucks to get a really nice bally song uh they also make a trainer version of it and um if you're a bally guy and uh, you're bristling right now because i said that um you gotta you gotta understand not all of us uh, prioritize that way so so if someone just wants to uh wet their whistle with one or get you know dip their toe in that's a great knife to do that with next up is the emerson super C cqc 15 at a solid four inches of 154 cm blade steel you know me emerson is is one of my absolute absolute favorite uh, companies designers and people uh, in the knife world and i love this <clears throat> excuse me this blade design this was taking the benefits or the the design the main design points from the cqc7 and the commander and putting them together from the commander you get the recurve and from the seven you get that tanto point uh this was a gift from a good friend of the show and i'm always grateful for that bill uh and very nicely ergonomic 
perfect size. I got to say, so I had the 15, the regular full size 15 several years back. I sold it and regretfully, I, I have a new never sell an Emerson policy. Uh, but uh, so this one, the, the 15 that I got rid of the full size always felt like it was a little cramped. I have to admit, just a little cramped. And I do not have huge hands. This one. Uh, has the same bird's beak on the tail end and the same finger guard up front, but it gives you just a little more space to open the hand up, especially for like a saber grip like this, where your hand sort of elongates. Uh, very comfortable knife to carry. Uh, really nice, generous wave on the back of the blade. On the back of the uh, blade here, really excellent thumb ramp. Unlike most Emersons, this one is not a front flipper. <laughs> Most Emersons have a tang that protrudes to the point where you can front flip it. This one is not one of those. Uh, this is a candidate, as are all my Emersons, uh, admittedly. This is a candidate for a vantage point handle uh, re refitting one of these days. Tom Engelson uh, used to go by blades and such. He's now Vantage Point Blade Works, I believe. Vantage Point. Uh, look him up on Instagram. He does great, great aftermarket handle scales for Emerson knives. And, and a few others. Next up comes to us again from Italy. Land of the Classy Knives. Uh, this one is designed by a gentleman that you know, Jason Knight. Jason Knight, a one-time judge on Forged in Fire. Uh, he was a substitute judge. And um, it was just great on that show. But he that's the show, or that show exposed me to him started following him and watching him. He has a lot of videos of him forging his knives. His signature knives are these really robust and refined kukris. Kukris in a, sort of an Americanized, sometimes they remind me of Bowie kukris, but on the whole, they're just uh, these amazing kukris with deep recurves and this signature um, fuller. You'll see them in his large knives, and they they brought it down into this Fox production knife. This is titanium, this frame lock. I really like this very subtle little spoon clip. It reminds me of an early ZT clip. Uh, you got the lock bar insert, as usual. Very nice micarta. I love how it's patinaing on mine. This was the first run, and I had to get it from Tactical Elements, and then they have branched out this one is yeah n690co because it's a fox knife <laughs> and they're sitting on several thousand billion tons of n690co you know even though the same company makes m390 it's not like that's unavailable to them okay next up is the max ace sandstorm k the max ace sandstorm k is a beast beastly knife i'm still in a honeymoon phase with this very very ergonomically very comfortable thick this this sucker is uh about as thick uh if not more so than the yeah it's more so i'm just holding it and this is purely anecdotal because i don't have it in front of me but this this is thicker than a an xm24 it's got a four and a quarter inch blade uh this Blade steel is K110, which is sort of the European version of D2 steel. Has a lot of the same properties. Very high, uh, very high flat grind. It's really, really thin behind the edge. You can barely see that that cutting edge. It's so thin. And you've got that double peaked sort of clip point look that I love so much. Uh, you've got some jimping north of the. You've got some jimping west of the thumb stud here and then some on that thumb ramp i do wish that both of the jimpings were a little bit sharper just for my personal taste you have a nice pattern milled into this uh in my case tan g10 i like the concentric circles on the pivot you have a very heavy uh liner construction with four standoffs very nicely nice and stout but you can see they did quite a quite a job at at eliminating some steel there by pocketing out the liners. Very robust and uh, very sure uh, liner lock there. Weirdly small pocket clip. 
uh, weirdly thin. I feel like that pocket clip could be a little wider, but it works just fine. Uh, but aesthetically, I feel it could do that. Just be a touch wider, just, just for the look of it. Uh, okay, next up is the Off-Grid Enforcer XL. And uh, this thing is a solid straight up four inches uh, on, that, on that beautiful bellied Warncliffe blade. Really textured, really textured. These are not milled in. These these are feel like they're milled out. <laughs> Obviously, that's not the case, but they removed so much that each one of these little neurals is a pyramid and, and it stands proud and tall and almost to the point where if I were using this a lot, this is my car knife. If I were using this a lot, I would probably take a piece of sandpaper and knock it down a little bit. Definitely under the pocket clip, it would you know just destroy your pockets. But uh, those that's the only that's the only ding on this outrageously awesome knife uh, from Carrie Orifice and Off Off Grid Knives. That's D2 blade steel. They cryogenically treat their D2. I'm not exactly sure uh, why they don't label them all. Sometimes they say D2 cryo. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but I do know that they cryogenically treat their D2. Uh, here is the pocket clip. The new off-grid knives all have the recessed clip with the flat screws. That's what's so cool about Carrie and being a sole proprietor and having a you know a small company. You can remain nimble. You can hear the feedback. And once you're through your first run of a knife, you can incorporate some changes. And that's what he's done with all of... Uh, all of the knives, all of the new ones coming out uh, are appearing like this. So you're not getting uh, the screws menacing with your with your pocket seam as it comes in and out. Uh, there's a nice big glass breaker on this, which I've uh, I vacillate back and forth about removing. But since it's my car knife, I should probably just leave it on. If I were carrying this around, I would remove it. Really great action. Uh, that fall shut action. These are made by Best Tech, who has proven to be just an amazing OEM. Uh, so much so that Kerry has moved all of his uh, elite line of production knives. They had two elite knives there from we to Best Tech. And now they're making all of the knives for off-grid knives at Best Tech, even the uh, titanium frame lock ones. And they're incredible. So very happy about that. And I'm really, really excited about this genre of knives. I mean, to say that is is that actually goes without saying. That is my whole driving uh, force behind knife collecting is this range, the four inch folding knives. So uh, this is I'm just going to do the quick rundown. I've got the Bravo, the SOCOM Bravo by Microtech, the Boker Squail, which is my absolute grail, the ZT045, 0452 CF. The Black Talon 2 by Cold Steel. We've got the Bastinelli Big Drago Tack underneath here. The Lucha uh, Bally Song by Kershaw. The Super CQC 15 from Emerson. The Fox Elements Knight MK Ultra Folding Kukri. And the Max A Sandstorm K. And of course, the Off Grid Knives Enforcer XL, the current awesome ultimate car knife. So, do you like large folders? Are these too big for you? Are they too heavy? Um, I don't know. Let me know. I, I, I think that there are about 50% of us out there who like the bigger knives and actually carry them. And then the rest of us like them, just don't carry them and might not even own them. If you want an outrageously large knife uh, folder just to have around, spend the 60 bucks on a Voyager and get that out of your system. <clears throat> an XL Cold Steel Voyager. Get that out of your system or let it ignite the fire for the large knives. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the show. Uh, tomorrow night, of course, is Thursday Night Knives, where we give away the Harns Falcon to one lucky gentleman junkie. And then, of course, uh, we will have a Sunday interview show. So uh, please be sure to go to Patreon, uh, go to the knifechucky.com slash Patreon if you're interested in supporting the show. And be sure to download us where you love to listen to podcasts. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com.
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.